This video will show a Modern Radio Laboratories one-tube DC all-wave receiver. The DC stands for direct current. In other words, it ran on batteries. When this kit was designed 83 years ago, a battery-powered radio was not that common. This radio kit was produced and sold by Elmer Osterhout of Modern Radio Laboratories from 1940 till his tragic death in the spring of 1987. The radio in this video was purchased from MRL in 1984. When Elmer designed this kit in 1940, it filled a void in the small radio set hobby field. Advertisements for one-tube radio kits and radio magazines began to disappear in the late 1930s. Here's an advertisement for a one-tube radio kit from Radio World Magazine, January 1934. Notice the MRL kit looks very similar to this one. Here's another advertisement. This one is from Shortwavecraft, April of 1934. The MRL kit also looks similar to this one. Radios of this type were banned around 1924 because they cause interference with other radios. It was illegal to sell one, but not illegal to sell a kit to build one because a kit is just a collection of parts. Serious radios used different circuits and had more than one vacuum tube. Here's a clip from 1936 that shows a radio with 10 vacuum tubes. I slowed down the recording we made from the time vortex. Mm -hmm. How bad? Bad enough. The handbook with the instructions to build the radio is copyright 1953, but this replaced a six-page mimeographed pamphlet that was written in 1940. In the handbook are instructions for building the antenna tuning capacitor. During the 1940s, radio components became difficult to get due to World War II, so Elmer built his own capacitors. He continued to supply the home-built capacitor for 47 years. Elmer's capacitors were cheaper than a factory-made one, and they helped to reduce the cost of the kit. Here's another cost-saving measure invented by Elmer. This switch connects the two halves of the tuning capacitor together so that the entire broadcast band can be tuned with a single coil. This is a picture of a page from the 1963 MRL catalog showing that the price of the radio kit is $6.50. Now the price did go up over the years. By 1987, the price of the kit was $14.95. But in 1987, as in 1940, it was basically the only one-tube radio kit on the market. The radio is considered all-wave because the bands of frequencies that it receives can be changed by swapping out plug-in coils. The term all wave was frowned upon in radio advertisements because the ads were misleading, but in this case it truly was an all wave set. Of course today that no longer applies. It does receive from below the AM broadcast band to above the citizens band or CB radio and all the short wave bands in between. And now for a brief demonstration of the radio. We'll be powering it with a homemade 27 volt B battery, which is just three 9 volt batteries in this box and a one and a half volt D cell which has a label on it to make it look like an old Burgess dry cell. The radio has no audio amplification of any kind so a pair of high impedance headphones are required to listen to it. For the purpose of this video we'll be using an external amplifier. Since the headphones are part of the circuit there's a switch on the front of the amplifier that substitutes a resistor for the headphones. This is the back of the switch there are three different resistor values that can be selected from the front panel. The amplifier itself is an LM386 module and it runs on a 9 volt battery. This is the AM broadcast band. It can be tough for marriages and parents. For a suggested donation of $50, you can order your copy today. Comes first. Philadelphia's BIN 610. Disobedience by saying that we were led to do such and such by the Holy Spirit. Director for Damien 
Damien Chazelle. It was mistakenly announced as the winner for Best Picture before it was given to Moonlight. No word yet on when the Broadway version will debut. <laughs> Will you do us a favor right now? Clear your mind of all other thoughts and reflect for just a moment. A wine cellar, basically. A wine cellar with three, like, unique tables. We were at, like, a table next to water for Coca-Cola. Yeah, typically a lot of these partnerships are memorialized in things like memorandum of understanding. Financing right now. Don't worry about your credit. They've custom loans to help almost from Philadelphia. Oh, man. In this part of the video, we've swapped out the broadcast band coil for the 40 meter shortwave coil. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've got something for you. And I'm not kidding. When I was much younger, I walked into a magazine store, something like Books a Million, or one of those kind of magazine places that sell books and everything. And on the magazine rack was this magazine called Nuts and Volts. And I looked at this thing, and I thought, what? That was two of the coils and there are three others. A link to the handbook is listed below the video. You can still build this set. The parts are not that hard to acquire. As a matter of fact, a guy named Max sent me these pictures of a set that he built in February of 2023.